Good morning and welcome to my channel. Here on this table I put several plants from different parts of the world, plants that belong to different families, and yet they all look pretty much the same. And this is because they are all stem succulents, which means they are plants that are adapted to dry conditions, that through the process of evolution lost their leaves and made their stem a photosynthesizing organ, which means the stems are green and the stems are taking the role of a leaf because leaves are uh, photosynthesizing organs for, for plants that do have leaves. And uh, also they store water in their stems. Okay, So they are very similar in their design just because they have to get adapted to the same kind of conditions. We have to remember that if we can see an organism alive it means it's extremely well adapted to its conditions, okay? because otherwise it would have been replaced by something else that would have been better that adapted. Okay? So if we see those plants, uh, we, see them, we see that they are extremely well, well adapted to where they grow, and regardless of which type of, uh, which continent it is, for dry environments, there have to be similar solutions. Okay, uh, so here on this table there are cacti. This is a cactus, okay, and so is this. This one is a cactus, and here is a cactus. So these are all cacti, and these are all plants from the Americas. Okay, these are American plants from American deserts and semi-deserts and in the Americas the dry conditions are somehow monopolized by cacti they grow everywhere in Africa which also has plenty of deserts the situation is very different because there are geographical barriers between uh, different deserts between uh, the the environment in the Africa is n doesn't change gradually. It is just uh, a desert divided, uh, the deserts are divided either by ranges of, mo of mountains or by the jungle. By, uh, so in different parts of Africa, succulents and stem succulents had to evolve independently. Okay, so uh, the most common, the in numbers, uh, succulents in um, in Africa are euphorbias. Look at this euphorbia, euphorbia horrida. Look how similar it is to a cactus. It all, all, it has um, also spines just like a cactus. Okay, not all euphorbias have spines because they are very toxic. They have toxic sap inside them that prevents animals from um, eating them and from stealing the water from them. Okay, And this is also a euphorbia, a stem succulent. This one has plenty of spines. Okay, This is a euphorbia too. Okay, So these are euphorbias, and, but look at this plant. It looks exactly like this euphorbia, almost exactly. It would be very difficult to confuse it, if uh, to confuse them, if there was no label on the pot, or if we didn't know how the plants, how the flowers look on these uh, on these plants. So this is um, Senecio stapeliformis, which means it is a plant that belongs to the family uh, Composite, same family where. Uh, dandelions and daisies belong. Okay, so a plant from the family Composite was the first one to colonize uh, uh, a desert somewhere in Africa and it had to get adapted to it and here it is. Okay, and Stapeliformis means 
that Senecio stapeliformis. Stapeliformis means uh, uh, it looks like a stapeliad. And this is a plant from the family Asclepiadaceae, from a uh, stapeliad group of plants. It's a stapeliad here, and this one is a stapeliad too. Stapeliads are stem succulents that have flowers. This one is in bloom, that's why I put it here. That has flower, that uh, they have flowers that attract flies as they are pollinators. And this one is in bloom, you see the flowers here. Okay, and stapeliads are extremely interesting because the flowers look like, um, uh, have the colors of rotting meat and they smell like rot as well. And look, this is a cactus too from America and it looks very similar in, in its design to those stem succulents. Okay, it would be very easy to confuse them. Okay, so plants, succulents, not only have to store water, they have to, in their stems, they have to make sure the water stays in the stems and doesn't evaporate. And this is the shape, the surface area to the volume ratio uh, that uh, optimize somehow the rate of evapor evaporation as well. But some of them, some of the cacti developed woolly coats from their spines. The spines actually are modified leaves in the process of evolution. So they covered themselves with this coat to prevent, uh, to create some shade, but also to prevent uh, the insects to penetrate through them and also to prevent larger animals from eating them and stealing the water. Okay, here are some spines that are very effectively protecting this plant from being eaten or this plant. This is a, this is a euphorbia, and this is a cactus. Look very much, they look very much the same, and yet one is from America, one is from Africa, and one is from the family Cactaceae, one is from the family Euphorbiaceae, one is euphorbia, one is a cactus. Okay, so uh, similar solutions, because there are only so many possible ways of resolving uh, the problem and the uh, and so many ways that are optimal okay and also if you could please have a look at these plants they all have ribs which is important because ribs if you look at them they allow the sun to uh, they allow uh, they create some shade so the sun is only um, uh, shining on one side of the rib at a particular time of the day okay so so the sun exposure is less damaging to the plant they are not this is this is a strategy that protects the plant from being burned by the sun the ribs only one side of the rib is uh is uh exposed to the sun during the day okay isn't it interesting i find it fascinating i find it really um well fascinating the fact that uh the evolution creates such marvels that uh nature is so uh diverse and this is probably why i keep weird plants and I'm so fond of them and I'm so interested in the ways in the paths that nature takes okay I hope you find it interesting too thank you very much for watching my video have a great rest of the day